I feel anxious and overwhelmed. I created the Asmara channel today, and I can't help but feel like I'm making so many wrong decisions. What if I'm starting this channel too soon? What if people misinterpret what I'm trying to say? What if this channel isn't what God has for me? I don't know, and I guess I won't know unless I try. But I do know this. Too few people are willing to tell hard truth. So I must dare to show up authentically and be the domino. I started this channel exactly a year ago and I feel like most people make these types of videos when something like crazy happens to their channel or when they reach some, you know, milestone or whatever. And honestly, I feel like my channel is doing the exact opposite right now. Uh, but I just wanted to really create this video to be honest, um, but not just honest, transparent as to where I'm genuinely at one year later. This is my brand new gaming channel. This game I am obsessed with, absolutely love. I have not been able to play The Sims 3 in so long. Girl, where you going? Do you hear the city hall, man? Masumni Queb. So now onto the part most of y'all are probably curious about. What happened? And then also like, you know, the creator on the rise, I'm like, okay, so that's a thing. <laughs> I just want to say this as a thank you to all the new people that have joined over this past month. And I think that's what, you know, people are wanting to see, like who's behind the camera. This is a more like personal type video, but being a black person, I don't have the option really to not think about race. And it kind of made me realize that this is an issue that other people of color experience as well. Something I kind of learned is that my channel is honestly, not even that much about gaming as much as it is about um visibility the year 2020 changed everybody um june specifically of that year was definitely monumental for me personally um not only were we in a global pandemic and we still are in a global pandemic uh, and like a racial epidemic. And um, I was, I had just finished my first year of college, if you'd even call it that. I was failing most of my classes. <laughs> I was blogging as a creative side hustle. Uh, it was a time of a lot of confusion, but I also managed to find a lot of clarity. I've talked about this a few times on the channel, but I read this book, um, More Than Enough by Elaine Welteroth. And this is the book that became the catalyst for me to really take steps in my life that I was afraid to and really step into things that I didn't think I was deserving of. It really just sort of exposed this idea of what could be on the other side of fear. When you find yourself existing in the space between dreams realized, parts of you will feel too big for where you are, while other parts of you will feel too small for where you're going. Go anyway, do not wait, do not wonder if you can, do not ask for permission. And when the world tells you to shrink, expand. Remember, you have done enough, you are enough, you were born enough. The world is waiting on you. So this is about the approximate location where the idea for Asmara or the motivation for Asmara initially began. It actually wasn't a room yet <laughs> last year. It was just, you know, a deck. Um, this just got added on within the past year. But late May 2020, early June is when I really started looking back at my life um, and thinking about what was working, what wasn't working, where I was, where I wanted to go. And then I wrote this in my journal. This is May 28th, 2020. The more I make content, the more I'm realizing that my actual audience I'm addressing is a younger, more insecure, and more lost version of myself. At 14, I was beginning to explore the intersection of being a gamer, but also being female and enjoying feminine things. Misogynistic microaggressions kept me, as it does with so many young girls, at a place of insecurity for simply being who I was and liking the things I did. The more time had elapsed, the more examples I had that women are diverse, complex, and multifaceted. Again, this is before I even had started this channel. Um, it's just something I had in the back of my mind, something I've been thinking about, because I had sort of just given up on this idea um, that I really fit here um, and belong here. That was the period where this really started clicking for me and this, this book really gave me the courage to sort of step into the unknown and um, 
starting rewriting my own story. That is the point where as Mara, uh, not just as the channel, but as the person truly began. So I just got to school and I tried to do a little bit of work before I go to class. Um, sometimes I study in the morning a little bit and I'm just kind of thinking about some of my channel milestones and just what I've accomplished so far with the Asmara channel and kind of just wanted to go through, you know, a few of them with y'all. So like my first video I posted was Growing Up Black on YouTube Gaming and that video uh, definitely was very impactful. I felt like this video was one of those that sort of sparked the um, purpose, I feel like, of this channel. And um, it really embodied this idea of trying to make the invisible visible. I feel like that first video was really the fuel for this channel. A lot of Sims 3 videos in the beginning, uh, playing The Sims 3 on Mac, I remember when that came out on Mac around the time I started my channel and it gave me a way to make some gaming content. Initially, I didn't really know how it was going to do that. But that actually reminds me of a question I got from Emily um, who asks, what is my opinion about this idea of Let's Plays being dead? Do you personally enjoy producing Let's Plays? And even though I haven't gotten, you know, I haven't done a Sims yet, Let's Play just yet, uh, personally, I don't think Let's Plays are dead. I think a lot of gameplay is definitely switched over to Twitch because I feel like people enjoy that platform and there's something different you get with Twitch that you don't get with YouTube. But for me personally, I don't think every type of game is, I don't enjoy watching every type of game as a live stream. I still really like watching Let's Play videos on YouTube. So I get the discourse of like, yeah, the traditional form of doing Let's Plays is definitely not what we're doing now, you know? That's not, that's not really, I think, what's gonna work best on YouTube. Um, but I don't think they're dead. I just think people have to come up with innovate, innovative ways to do Let's Plays because the whole idea of playing video games on the internet is to share your gameplay. So yes, I do enjoy doing Let's Plays and that's honestly because I personally still enjoy watching Let's Plays on YouTube. I'm more of a YouTube girl <laughs> than a Twitch, Twitch girl. And then December of 2020, I released part one of my What Happened to The Sims 4 documentary. That definitely took a lot out of me emotionally, mentally, creatively that was a it was a labor of love creating that documentary um and i'm glad i did because obviously i wouldn't be here without it but uh i got a question asking if i think i'm going to do more documentary style videos like this one yes uh i want to but not as frequently and i talked about this a little bit in a video i did it's called what is mara means to me these videos that are very analytical take a lot out of me and even though a lot of people enjoy them and they get, you know, a lot of good uh, feedback and performance, it's just a lot of me mentally, emotionally to make these type of videos, especially because I'm just a one person team right now, you know? So I do enjoy making those videos. I do want to make more, but it's just a lot <laughs> to say the least. These videos take a lot out of me. And of course the gaming creator on the rise was crazy and I got a huge massive traction of followers from that too following the release of the second part of the Sims 4 documentary. And I was being interviewed around this time and all this craziness. Crazy to believe that was just earlier this year. It feels like so long ago. And here I have my Life is Strange 2 series. This is kind of the moment where I wanted to sort of deter myself from just being seen as like that Sims girl or a Sims channel. Uh, I had a lot of access to Sims 3 sort of in the beginning of my channel as it came out on Mac. I never created this channel with the intention to be a simmer. So uh, me playing Life is Strange was kind of like the start of me deterring from, I guess, that simmer identity, which is still, you know, a little difficult for me to escape even now, just because of how a lot of people found my channel. Definitely I can see sort of that shift happening with the Life is Strange Let's Play. I dress like your favorite Sims townies for a week. That is definitely one of my favorite videos. That was a lot of fun. It was, I feel like cinematically, I got to do some cool stuff with the camera work. 
Um, I got to do something with fashion, which I love, and it got to be gaming related. So that's definitely one of my favorite videos, hands down. I played Minecraft 1.6.4. This is another one of my favorite videos. <laughs> it's just a fun gaming video and it was just fun to kind of go through that nostalgia, that memory lane to revisit Minecraft. My 10K subscriber video. Um, this one, it's literally, it's almost 40 minutes long. A lot of the things y'all probably want to know are in that video. So I'm not going to be answering all of your questions here, but a lot of them, uh, you can find answers to them in this video if you are interested. You're not black enough. I really like this video. This video essay, in addition to my You're Not a Real Gamer essay, are probably my, my two favorites behind my Sims 4 documentary. Again, I felt like those two videos sort of are reminders for me personally about like what this channel is and what I want it to be and what the foundation of it was. Then I took a break. Uh, I was in sort of just a weird mental space and I definitely want, needed sort of this mental break from YouTube, which I'm definitely glad I did. I also built my first gaming PC around this time. I'm not gonna lie, just because I took a break, that does not mean I don't still have doubts and stuff. It's not like I'm 100% about my channel still, but taking that break definitely helped after the massive momentum I was getting beforehand. But also it's kind of twofold because I feel like after that massive momentum, it kind of slowed down to a point where I'm not really sure how to get it back up again. Like I really like the Sims 3 videos will always perform. And so I posted a couple of those after I came back from my break. Um, but also I like other games and I like doing other things. And then here we are with Life is Strange True Colors at Let's Play, as well as some other random content I posted in between there. That's pretty much, you know, a summary of what my channel has been so far. But I need to do some more studying. I have a class shortly, so I'm gonna head out to that and I'll speak to you later. So that leads us to where we are today. And um, I kind of want to just go off script here and just be honest about uh, sort of what I've taken away over this past year. And uh, when it comes down to it, I'm really just kind of questioning with this project and just with all my uploads, uh, is it worth it? One of the things I really want to embody in my channel is this idea of authenticity, even when that truth may not always be pretty or may not always be like the expected answer, you know? Um, I don't know. I think we don't leave enough room, I guess, in this world to not be sure about things sometimes. Um, and I don't know how it is I come across to you guys. I don't know, I might come across like more confident and more bold, but the reality is, is that I'm a normal person and I go through waves of emotions too and I don't always feel the best all the time and I don't know, I struggle with feeling like I'm too young for the type of content I want to make that like who's gonna want to listen to like some 20 year old. There's also this pressure feeling like I have to overcompensate for my content, like I can't just be someone who's funny, I also have to be, you know, smart and intelligent so people can gain more from my channel i don't know to feel like i kind of have a significant or distinct place here or i have doubts about like how long this is gonna last and i definitely think that's a harmful belief because then you don't actually enjoy the process when you're always thinking about the end but i'm a normal person i have these sort of thoughts i'm also a perfectionist so when it comes to my projects i'm always like seeing how i could have done things better and like you know it's easy for me to compare myself to other content creators and especially those people who are around my age. I guess what I'm trying to say is when I see people, I guess, going down more traditional paths like my peers who are uh, juniors in college or my friends who are graduating and like seem to be moving forward in their life, sometimes I do definitely doubt what I'm doing. And again, this is like, I realize that's illogical thinking because nobody really has everything figured out. but. Um, that's just honest and that's just a real thought process that happens and that I go through. But back to my original question is, is Asmara worth it? You know, I spend so much time in this channel, more time than it may even seem. Um, this past year, I've probably spent more hours to working on videos for this channel than I have 
on anything else in my life. <laughs> you know, when you work so hard on something, you want to feel like it's worth it and that you're making a positive impact. And I guess when I think back to the comments that mean the most to me and the feedback, uh, what makes me feel the most successful in terms of this YouTube channel are um, comments where people were encouraged to do something or encouraged to show up more honestly and authentically um, because of a video I posted or something that I did. I got a comment once of somebody saying I was inspired to build a gaming PC because of your video about it and that really encourages me. Another comment that comes to mind is um, my growing up black on YouTube gaming video when someone was like, I uh, I want to make a channel, a YouTube channel with me and my son. It was like a mother commenting, playing games um, because I feel like people need to see more representation of black um, people uh, in the gaming space and black people that come in all different shapes and sizes and uh, forms, you know, to help kind of shed that invisibility. That meant a lot to me. Uh, people who comment on my you're not a real gamer video saying like oh my god this is something that I've been experiencing I'm glad somebody actually talked about this put it into words kind of found research to support what people are feeling my um, you're not black enough video people who could resonate with not really fully feeling like you're even connected to blackness and questioning your place in the black community in a community that's supposed to be home for you those are the type of comments that I feel best about and give me a little bit of hope about what this is all for. And I don't know how long this channel is gonna last. I try not to think about that as much because then, like I said earlier, you get lost in, I guess, seeing the end, but you never actually enjoy the process. And nothing in life is gonna last forever. Everything comes for a season. Um, very few things actually last a lifetime, rather, I should say. And so I'm still working towards being more secure in that and just being okay with that uncertainty. Just pushing through one step at a time. There's definitely doubts when I feel like people care about The Sims more than they care about me, or when you see the, you know, decrease in engagement, or people seem to only care about one type of content. It's all part of the motions, you know? But I guess, all in all, I just kind of have to make it worth it, you know? I kind of just have to be faithful in this season, taking it day by day and just trying to live intentionally, I guess, with this channel and continue putting out videos that have purpose. I guess with having this channel for a year, I've sort of learned to ex like accept the ebbs and flows and the highs and the lows. And even though I seem to be going through like a low or a valley, like in terms of statistics and engagement right now knowing that just because there may be engagement drop that does not mean the value of my content has dropped and i just want to prioritize the relationships that i can build with my community the people who are here supporting me and prioritizing making sure that my content is being beneficial to them as mara one year later i'm still not very certain about a lot of things surrounding this channel but I'm a work in progress. I guess that's the best thing I can say.